government, which remember has left the country with 5 million orphans and before we went there had the highest rate of women going to university and going into jobs such as lawyers and doctors. That's all gone now and the infrastructure is being completely broke. I just don't, what's progressive about that? I mean, Luke, say a uh, former Lib Dem, he's joined the Labour Party. Okay, well done. Okay. I mean, the, uh, first of all, I think it's important to say that very few people would say I'd fail to address the Middle East issue. I mean, I was actually leading the charge to sponsor the Gaza peace resolution because it happened in the past. And we were the country which actually led the way on thinking how you can find a way through the current crisis. I mean, I think that um, in respect of Iraq, look, people have different views about Iraq, and I respect that. But I think that as a uh, foreign secretary, and, uh, to be fair, Gordon deserves uh, credit for this as well. We actually set out what it means to be, to, to, to not just talk about anything but foreign policy, but do that. Uh, I was the project who brought us out of the world, as it happens. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I think the narrative you've told isn't quite a uh, bit unfair. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to get a picture with you? That's, no, that's okay. right. <laughs> Thank you. David, very quickly, because I'm sure you need a drink. Graham, ex-party member because of the war. So, right. well, welcome back. back. I'm supporting you. Great, thank you. Very quickly, Middle East, now it's informal. Yeah. What do you think the chances are we're going to get through it this year without a big one? Um, I, mean, I, I think the chances of a settlement, of a resolution are not great. Um, I mean, I'm sorry we weren't asked about the Middle East tonight. I was trying to ask you yeah. that question. Yeah. You didn't get through as many no, questions. Because you've got well, you're aware of what you're asking. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Yeah. Gary, Gary. Right, have we tempted you back? Uh, well, I voted for Britain T for the last three elections. Right. But is New Labour dead and buried? And are you going to take the party back to traditional values? What do you mean by traditional values? Well, I'm talking about proper socialist values. I, I think the minimum wage is pretty socialist. Yeah. So we did that, and, yeah. and Keir Hardy never managed to do that. No. The, uh, I think that the um, investments that we've done in health and education, that we saved the National Health Service. Yeah. National Health Service, privatisation, put the back door in the National Health Service. Where was that, though? I don't, don't recognise that. What, what PFI? Well, no, I do need to know that. Yeah, but I, that, that, I mean, I'm a great trade unionist, but I'm not, they're, they're not always no, right. So. Dave Prentice is no <laughs> left wing. Um, he's a good guy, but the. Um, he's, 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 um, no Labour, Dave Prentice, you say. Look, the best of New Labour was... But that's where you flush your, your, vote, your voters are moving away from New Labour. It doesn't represent the core values of the Labour Party. I think Albeit tax credits and all that sort of stuff, I agree, good, yeah. is socialistic. But there's lot, lots of... Yeah, but tax credits is poverty as well. I've been on tax credits. And I've, I've actually experienced extreme poverty on tax credits. But, but it's a, that's which people don't understand wage, they're on them. Minimum wage tax credits are, are socialistic. It helps bring people yeah. to poverty. But, the, but the new you Labour project, I mean, Mavis is Tory. Why is Mavis doing it? You have to live on tax who, credits I mean, to know how poverty is. I don't think he's a Tory in Sheffield, where his industrial policy was giving them hope for steel makers jobs. Honestly, I promise you, I was there. Hi there. David, can oh, we fail? Still work. Sorry, can I just give you that and go? With the uh, Sheffield. I've I sent you an email this morning. I sent you an email this last right. night about education policy generally. We didn't talk much about education. No. I don't know what you picture for Isaac's child education, but it isn't what we get now, is it? It's about it's lighting be. a fire, not just filling a pail. Right. That's right. Yeah, it's said. Yeah, yeah. So just, 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 sorry, I just leave so, that with you. Okay, so new thanks. So, new Labour is still going to be a continu continuation? No, I think, it, I think we've got to. I mean, I said the first thing I said this campaign is it's over. And we've got to ask the question on next week, but not new Labour. No one asked us. When you remember the Bevan Nights, I was quite excited. And I thought, that's fantastic. Your father was a Bevan Nights. No. Your father? No, your father. My dad was a Bevan Nights. He was, yes. My name my name's been I was excited. I thought, this is the man. But then you moved away from the Bevan Nights. Can I ask Thanks for coming tonight. I hope you follow the campaign, see if we can inspire you. David, I'm from Brighton Health Community Hello. Radio. I was, I was supposed to interview you before. Right, sorry but, about that. Um, that's okay. <laughs> but I've got a question to ask you about the voluntary sector. Right, far away. If you were sort of the leader or the Prime Minister even, how would you undo the damage that's going to be done, and it has already been done so far with the Conservatives, on the cutbacks in the funding? Because there's a lot of voluntary groups that are going, and, and to me, they're the grassroots. Those are the people that are actually helping who we call is our working class or our well, underclass. I think the voluntary or groups come like from all them. sections of society. Um, one of the biggest differences we have with the Tories is that they seem to think the voluntary sector prospers. Um, when the government withdraws, whereas our experience is that when you have the right sort of support from government, actually the voluntary sector can prosper on the back of that. And you see that in communities all over the country. Now, I'm not going to make promises that I can't keep, but you know that we think that the way in which the Tories are going 
about trying to secure the economic recovery is wrong. In fact, we think it's dangerous. And the monetary sector is going to have an extra burden and less resources, and that's the worst possible combination. We've already been told in the social networks to actually pull our belts in because we're not going to get certain fundings. And um, they're now talking about putting voluntary groups together to try and fight that. Good. But, I mean, community leadership you're talking about, would that also be a way of fighting? Well, we've got to rally people together on a, a very clear basis. We've also got to explain to Tory and Lib Dem MPs in places like this that actually it's their voters who are being punished by what they're doing. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Can we just go on the picture with you? A what? Yeah. Yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, where's Lena? Hi there. Where's uh, Okay. Right, learning centre. We've got we are running a learning centre yeah. in the uh, local authority. Yeah. The GMB. Yeah. Which um, so is it helps. Yeah. Uh, nice. Alex. All all over the world. Spain, Japan, Holland. Oh my God! Not voters then. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming tonight. All right, thanks. Yeah, let's go away. We run associate voters. Yeah, exactly. We help people with learning difficulties and progress. And how would you? This question introduce skills, core skills, for the people of this country. I didn't understand the question. We, at the moment we're running a learning centre mm -hmm. with the local authority. Right. Who's we? Uh, the council right. and the GMB. Right. Oh, good. It's funded. Yeah. Um, and it teaches people that have, are working at the moment but obviously got learning difficulties in the unskilled sector. How would you group um, train up the unskilled sector to make this a progressive I don't know, how would you do that? I would like my learning centres. Right, and is that a GMB learning centre? It's a GMB with, with the council authority running it both Sounds good. together. Sounds good. My, daughter, adults, my, daughter, adults, yeah. my daughter can't read and write and she's been and refused a yeah. local education college well, that's courses. A big, that's a big so learning centres yeah, are good. Put it in high street, everywhere. Why, would, but why do people need to pay for education? Well, well, because it, if, if, if it's... If, it, if you can support um, other things, you can obviously support education, and that's the most vital thing for the country. I agree with that. And and with I mean, if you're you below level two, you've got a right to get free education up to level two. Hi there. Nice yeah, but if you refuse level one in the first place, which a lot of learning difficulties kids oh, really? are, learning centres are their only chance. Right. Totally agree with what you were saying. That's okay. Thanks. 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 <laughs> yeah, it is a two-horse race. That's an idea. I've, I've said that we should have some job shares in the ministerial team. You're missing your family. It's an ideal solution. <laughs> I think trying to get some family work-life balance is a good thing. But I'm not sure if job shares are quite going to work. <laughs> There's some jobs that are singular. <laughs> it's a good idea. Are you a job sharer? Yeah. Right. Great. Well, I'm really, really. I, where, are you, where are you doing the training? Very close to the country. And that's what's interesting. Great. It's in Brighton. <laughs> but I do think another big inequality is in poverty. Yeah. Gender. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a very good point. No, it's a pay gap, which is in, relates to income. So. All right, well, thanks for getting involved. Okay. <laughs> hi there, right, hi there, nice Thank to you. Me. Okay. Have you got a website? Yes, I have, davidmilliband.net. If you don't know that yet, then... Uh, it's, it's for the camera. Oh, I said, yes, please visit my website, davidmilliband.net. <laughs> Any questions will be answered. Sorry, can I just stand there? Oh, good, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Sorry, Smile, please. <laughs> Done? It still looks fuzzy. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's all right. Is there anything? Oh, there you are. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry. Well, there'd been a debate. Remember, we've been going on for 13 years, 12 years, yeah, well, since 91. And the more time argument um, was addressed very comprehensively in 2002. And it was, I mean, look at what Hans Blick said yesterday at the um, Iraq inquiry. It was in a way he debunked his own argument. No, I know, that's why it's worth looking at the testimony that he did yesterday. 
he didn't really address it. But it wasn't very clear because he'd argued for more time in 2002 and he'd been given more time in 2002. And then there was another deadline which was then missed. And then there was a final deadline. And if you have a final deadline, you shouldn't give it unless you have done it in a final deadline. Because I don't think you, I don't think we help. I mean, we bring the authority of the UN into disrepute when, over the space of 13 years, it has lots of final ultimatums and then never does anything. In fact, we'd have been better off if we'd followed through on some of the sanctions resolutions earlier. Thanks a lot. If you come back, welcome back. Thank you very much. Three, four, or five. I think we've got a. Well, we don't want it to be that long, but it's um, it's not looking good at the.